Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to explain how to disassemble and upgrade the HP Pavilion 27 inch, which is the same as the 24 inch for the purposes of this video, CA1000 series. Now, this is the companion video to the video we'll put in the upper right hand corner, which is the unboxing, setup, basic disassembly, full benchmarking, and review of the HP Pavilion CA1000 series. In this video, we'll show you how to upgrade or replace memory, change the Wi-Fi card, add a second SSD or spinning drive, change out the M.2 drive, and even change the CPU. So what you have to do is pull the speaker grill off right here, and then we have to pull the screen off, and then we get access to everything in behind. Uh, I could use my fingers and just pry this off, but I want to make sure I don't leave any marks on the screen. So I'm going to use an old credit card or something like that, and just pry back here and start pulling this off. There we go, just pry it, and it will just pop off. There we go, easy. Now we have to pull off all of these screws. There's uh, probably seven or eight. Of them. Oh, and I see they've just used a regular Phillips. I don't need to use specialized screwdriver. That's kind of nice. So you can just go grab a regular Phillips screwdriver. Uh, pro tip, lay your screws out in the order that they come out. So um, that one's from there, I'm putting it here. That one will be going here, and so on and so forth. Okay, so everything we've done so far, common sense. This is where it gets tricky. You would think that HP would have clipped this in along the edge, but they didn't. They clipped it in along the bottom. So that means for you to pull this out, you see, just grab the bottom here and lift out, you have to disconnect, you have to unclip it from the clips that are holding it into the back. That's a challenge. You probably don't have proper tools. So I'm gonna use an old credit card. Oh, that worked fine with the credit card. Very nice. So I'm pushing that down, there it is. I'm pushing that down a bit and trying to pry it in. There we go, you can hear it popping along. That's the sound of joy. Now when you lift this up, there's going to be two cables, possibly three. One's a video cable, one's a power cable, and you might have a touchscreen cable if yours is touchscreen. So let's see how this works. Okay, so I'm just going to pull that cable out so I can lift this up a little higher. Let's show you what's in here. To make this easy, I'm just gonna lift the screen out of the way but I could disconnect it altogether. Now, this is where HP has separated itself very nicely from Apple. And you think, well, of course the Apple's better. Yeah, I'm gonna go with no. Um, the Apple iMacs, this is a train wreck of a problem to get through. Uh, these cables are just too freaking short. With this, look at this, I can pull this off. This is awesome. This is so good. Speakers, these are just friction. They're on a couple of posts, you can just lift them out. You'll never need to do that, so don't bother. That USB port I was talking about, comes to here and connects to a USB header called dongle. So this little dongle here is the wireless receiver for the keyboard and mouse. So if you ever change your wireless keyboard and mouse, because the one you have dies, you could pull the speaker grill off, which is pretty easy as we showed you, take this USB dongle, toss it, put the new one in, Bloop, just like that. And as far as extras go and other add-ons go, uh, right here on some units, there's a little metal case and you pull a couple of screws out and you pop it out. And what's in there is a two and a half inch hard drive. And you think, well, why would anybody want an old school two and a half inch hard drive? I want the new M.2 SSDs. Yeah, okay, but when you can get a, a 20 terabyte spinning drive, maybe you want that extra space. Now, they didn't include the little chassis here. I can tell you from experience, however, you can also just double-sided tape this in with the part you're really missing is the hard disk drive cable, but you can get that at your local electronics store. And I don't, I'm not talking about Radio Shack or the source. I'm talking about guys that actually have computer parts, or you can find it on Amazon because it's a very small little cable that just whoop, goes over here and connects on the hard disk drive connector. That is your Wi-Fi card. And in the back here, there are two little cables. Those are antennas. If you want to change your Wi-Fi, which at this point you wouldn't, but a few years from now you might, there might be something better. It's easy to do. Pop the little screw out. Pop the two wires off, toss the card, put a new one in. And this is an M.2 2230 slot. And all that means is 22 millimeters wide, 30 millimeters long. 
least I think it's 2230. That's most likely what that is. This is a 2280. This is your hard drive. This is your solid state drive. And this is 22 millimeters wide, 80 millimeters long. If you ever have real trouble with the unit, you can pop this battery out and that will flush your BIOS and set it back to factory. Memory, now I expected two eight gig DIMMs, but instead they've only used one. So let's pop that out. That's quite unexpected, which means I can easily pop a second one in and get 32 gig. This funky looking thing is uh, called a heat pipe. And all it's doing is transferring the CPU heat, which is underneath, the CPU is under here, and it's transferring the heat from here up into here. And then the fan blows it out. The fan is probably the only thing that's ever going to fail in this. And fortunately, it's three screws to pull out. You just pull that screw out, that screw out, and that screw out, and pop it out. Easy to change, common part. This is really cool. And this is sticky so that they know when you're, you know, you're going to pull this monitor off, that it's not going to mangle up the cable. They want to keep this nice and straight in here. That's to keep their warranty cost down. That's, that's a good solution. And one of the things I notice here is that this has a lever on it uh, beside the chip, which means if I pull these three screws out, I can lift this heat pipe unit off and I can pop this clip out and I can change the CPU. That's very, very unusual in an all-in-one. Usually they're soldered right on the board, but that's, uh, that's interesting. That means in the future, I could genuinely go get a different CPU and just pop it in. And it will just work, assuming that it's the same pin grid array underneath. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. It's a lot of weeds. If you had an add-on video card, it would go right here. And it would just pop on top right there. There are two connectors in here that I know you can't see, but trust me, they're there. Okay, I'm going to reassemble this now. Let's power it up and see how it works. It's very important that when you're putting this in, that you squeeze it in ever so gently on the edge. Do not do this on the screen or you'll do what we call bruise it and you'll have marks on the screen. The edge, if you look very closely, and I know you can't see it on the camera, has a dead zone all the way around it. So just clip your way in as best you can. HP logo up, Bang & Olufsen logo to the right. So I'm going to lean it in from the bottom, so it's out at the top, and then I'm just gonna, yep, step along. Hey, if you found this video useful, we'd really appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up. Subscribe's also appreciated, and if you want to get a hold of us, you can always do that at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Or you can leave a question and a comment below, and it's YouTube, so somebody will get back to you. Thanks, and have a great day. Bye-bye.